Hey guys, I wanted to talk a little bit about gamification uh, and video games. And so I've been working recently for about the last few months as an industrial psychologist. I work primarily with uh, performance based. So I, I generally try to improve the performance of employees in an organization. I've worked with some esports teams. Um, I've got to work with a lot of different companies with this. And one of the... Um, one of the things that we do a lot to improve performance and to also reduce the, um, I guess the turnover rate increase the, the, and turnover is basically just whenever someone joins a company, they end up leaving because they're either stressed out or they just don't really like the job. Uh, they don't really feel like they, they have a place. Um, increased job satisfaction, reduced turnover, increased performance. One of the tricks we use a lot is gamification. What gamification basically is, is it's a way to use behavioral psychology to have people enjoy doing something more and feel more rewarded by doing basic tasks. Um, it can be kind of boring if you're someone who's a programmer who's just constantly programming endlessly day in, day out for 10 years. So what psychologists have done is they found a way how to turn it into a game. We like video games because we feel rewarded for doing what we do. The The way behavioral psychology works is that if you get rewarded for doing something, you enjoy doing that thing because you enjoy getting rewarded, so you enjoy doing that thing because you subconsciously know you're going to get rewarded. And video games use a ton of forms of gamification because they're constantly giving you rewards for little things that you're doing. In this particular game of Heroes of the Storm, every kill you do gives your team experience and allows you to win something later. And it allows you to continuously feel rewarded for the actions that you're doing. And so we do this trick in industries where we give you a reward for doing your job. And so say you have a really long project that's going to take about a year and a half to do the entire project. Well, you're not going to feel very rewarded for doing that project. And so it's going to be less motivating to see this giant project along the way. So what some companies will do is they'll create little tasks along the way to kind of encourage you to continue um, doing your tasks and not feeling as like just cog in the machine while you're doing this ginormous project. So what we might do is let's say your project is this big marketing project where you're gonna be running, um, you're gonna spend the first three months building ads and testing those ads on a very small budget. And then you're gonna finally push those ads out in about six months. Well, that's a long time to be working on something. So instead, every small project or so, we're gonna set up something where it's kind of a push goal where if you complete these specific tasks in a short amount of time, you will get points or rewards and your bonuses will be more related to your own personal um, contributions to this project, not necessarily the stretch goals of the project because usually how bonuses work for companies is if your company does more sales, everyone at the company gets bonuses or everyone in the upper level gets bonuses. But you don't necessarily need to work harder on yourself. If the marketing team does really well, then a lot of the programming team could still be working very slow. So what ends up happening is the bonus structure is adjusted to where you get bonuses by doing your work faster and better. And so you get more encouraged to go to work because you could be getting close to your next bonus. You could get close to your next um, benefit. And you could not just give bonuses as far as just money, but what we also do is we'll give bonuses in the form of paid time off. So you could get extra paid time off uh, if you finish your, your projects on time, which just makes sense, right? You finish your project and you're waiting for the other teams to finish their project. Well, guess what? You get free vacation, but you get paid to go on vacation. And your team doesn't really need you at work anyways, and it's a great way to encourage people to be excited to do work because they're always getting um, rewarded. So that's a basic three minute, very simplified version of what companies do to gamify their company um, and to improve this productivity and why a lot of companies do hire performance-based industrial psychologists is because you can encourage your company to enjoy going to work, to be excited to get their work done earlier and better because they get these bonus structures. Um, with that though, 
how does that affect gaming? Because gaming already rewards you for playing games. So why would you gamify a game? And this is where I think that it's really fun to gamify your games to give yourself more goals and more things to work on um, and reward yourself for doing these other things. One of the big things you can do is join an esports team. Um, there are tons of tournaments going on at every level of play in almost every competitive game. If you play Heroes of the Storm or you play Overwatch or you play League of Legends, there are different divisions for your level of play. And these all have their own rewards. Sometimes it's not money, but sometimes it's bragging rights. Sometimes it's just the, the feeling of being as a team and going in and going against teams that are more around your skill level and that they're all playing seriously and just knowing that you can beat a team that's playing seriously. Um, there are a ton of different games and, and competitive levels that you can do with that, but there's more than that too. I like to give myself other goals throughout gaming where I I look at a maybe a rank where I'm going, okay, I just want to hit this rank by this day, and I'm going to watch my own gameplay and try to watch the win rates that I have at different times of the day and watch the win rates that I have with different heroes, and I'm going to do my best to improve to hit that rank sooner than later. And sometimes I'll reward myself a little bit for it too. I'll maybe take a break of the game um, after I hit that that number. Maybe I'll I'll continue playing the game with my newfound rank or my newfound level on that hero. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll I'll get myself something. Like if there's something that I've been wanting to buy for myself, but there's a goal that I feel like would be really big, I, instead of just buying it right when I want to buy it, I'll give myself a productivity goal. Now in gaming. Sometimes it seems kind of dumb to give yourself a reward for playing video games, but it could also just be something that shows you that you can accomplish a difficult task and reward yourself for it and improve your ability to go for complex tasks in the future. So a task that you're not sure that you can take and you go for it and you get it can improve your efficacy, which is a form of self-esteem. Uh, your self-efficacy is your basically your subconscious ability to know that you can handle difficult situations. So if you can improve your self-efficacy through video games, then that also improves your self-efficacy overall. That can improve um, how you handle tasks in the future in, in any form of tasks. And uh, so not only gamifying a game by rewarding yourself with I mean, maybe something financial or maybe something uh, just like uh, rewarding yourself for playing a different game or whatever. Uh, you find a way to reward yourself with maybe just something that you enjoy doing that you don't do that much. Gamifying your game can not only improve your enjoyment of that particular game, but it could also improve your self-efficacy in the future by improving your... Um, confidence for handling these complex situations if you can join a team environment and uh and beat a team that's around equal skill that's trying just as hard as you're trying then that shows that you have the ability to compete with people who have equal skills in the real world if you need to compete against people for another job position knowing that you already can handle a competitive environment um should improve your confidence for any future situations that you might have. And so gamifying your games can be great for a lot of reasons, but I do want to give more ideas for gamifying because it is just something that it sounds easier on paper than it is in practice, but gamifying is any way of rewarding yourself. Rewarding yourself um, in just any sense you already can think of a reward, but I want to actually give you guys something more. There are some tricks we use to kind of give the feeling of a reward even if things aren't actually a reward and this is not going to sound like a reward at all but if you exercise specifically cardio which is um usually more intense exercise for shorter periods of time um it's less about weight lifting but more about just out there cardio can give many endorphins that can make you feel like you're gaining a reward more so than you actually are um so if you ever do start hitting those micro goals that you've done 
Start doing light exercises. Some jumping jacks is one of my favorite ones for triggering these endorphins and these neurotransmitters. Um, jumping jacks are easy to do. You can do them in small areas and you don't need to do them for very long. Five minutes of jumping jacks after you hit your daily goal for whatever you're going for in your game can improve your enjoyment of that game and also improve your health at the same time and thus actually kind of spinning back around and improving that um, that um, that feeling more so because not only have you hit your goal for the day but you've also done something to make you feel healthier and more active so it's a really great tool that kind of tricks your brain into feeling that it's a reward if you can't just buy yourself something every time that you hit your reward so i wouldn't recommend buying yourself something for accomplishing a goal in a video game um but what i would recommend is start doing jumping jacks or light cardio activities um after accomplishing your goal because you also get to stew on that goal a little bit more let's say your goal for the day is um ending a day with more wins and losses and you your goal is three wins at the minimum so let's say you get three wins and two losses you end the day and you get to kind of sit on that more wins and losses as a as a benefit and you get to feel that rewarding feeling longer and you get to go exercise which is going to enhance that feeling and it's also going to um just make you healthier so that's the way that i'd recommend gamifying um not only video games, but in a way, you can also gamify your exercise in a similar sense. Um, the more you exercise, you can go back and play video games and reward yourself for exercising. So it's kind of gamifying both video games and exercise at the same time. And hopefully you guys learned something a little bit on why uh, corporations will hire psychologists. Um, because it's kind of a, a fun gimmick anyways to improve productivity and job satisfaction while also just making people's jobs more enjoyable. Because at the end of the day, work isn't something that most people enjoy. Um, most people go to work so that they can pay their bills. And, uh, and, and it would be great if your job could uh, be more entertaining. For a lot of people, uh, especially the ones that take higher paying jobs just because of the pay, it gets worse. Uh, there's a lot of jobs that are definitely enjoyment and feels more like a, uh, a hobby than a job. But there are a lot of jobs that you're just kind of stuck with that, that feels like you're doing it just for the pay and then you have your hobbies afterwards. So finding ways to gamify your work, even even if your job doesn't bring in a, uh, a psychologist to do it, but finding ways to gamify your work can be a really, really cool tool for increasing your, uh, your enjoyment at your job. Uh, so definitely check that out. So um, if you guys haven't heard of gamification before this video, I recommend checking out some videos on gamification so you can learn a much more in-depth version of it. I gave a very basic idea of behavioral psychology and gamification as well as how you can kind of improve your own game with it. Um, and it's just a random video. I've been wanting to do more psychology-based videos with gaming. Um, so this is kind of just my inching in that direction as well as still making, I, I hopefully I'm scheduling this out to where you, you see a HOTS video in between each of the uh, psychology videos. But um, I did just want to bring out some of these for that. So if you guys have any uh, questions about gamification, feel free to just shoot me a message on Discord. And uh, I, I definitely wouldn't mind answering those. So join the Discord. I should link it down in the description down below. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you guys can always message me about that. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really cool method for improving your enjoyment about things that might not be as enjoyable or things that are already enjoyable improving your enjoyment even further thank you guys so much for watching and feel free to check out my other videos